Hello, thank you for joining me. I've just come out for a drive in my larder today and I've parked here under this very nice golden oak tree at Paynes Hill Park in Surrey. And in today's video, we're going to go and explore some of the finest 18th century gardens there is to see. This is the River Mole. I featured the River Mole before in my videos when we went to the Chantley Heath Semaphore Tower. That's just along the river from here. The River Mole plays quite a key part in part of these gardens which we're visiting today. So they were designed by Charles Hamilton. Now Charles Hamilton, he was born in Dublin. He'd been on a grand tour of Europe and then he eventually came here to Surrey where he set up his gardens. As I mentioned, these are some of the finest 18th century gardens. Now if we turn a corner here, we come to the lake which the River Mole feeds. And looking across there, we can see a ruin but it's not really a ruin. It's known as the Abbey. Now I've been to various ruined abbeys on my videos before, but the funny thing is this was built as a ruin. It's a romantic ruin, so it's a folly really. And we're gonna see plenty of follies in today's videos. Of course, right now we've got a lake to cross. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna follow this path around the lake, enjoy the vistas across at some of these follies. They're gonna gradually start to reveal themselves. And then later on in the video, somehow we'll end up over there and we'll go and explore the folly. So let's go and do a, a do a bit of a tour around the world, but without leaving Surrey. Having come further down the lake, see some of the bridges starting to reveal themselves. There's a Chinese bridge over there, and then over there it looks quite exciting. There's some grottos, and then that is the Willet Bridge. So what I'm going to do, my plan is to basically completely circumnavigate the lake and then come over the hill past the abbey and then we'll make our way across those islands and then further into the estate. I've now pretty much circumnavigated the lake. Just through the trees there is the Gothic temple. We'll go and have a proper look at that in a minute. But first we're going to go into the hill. Looking like a tunnel here. This is the ice house. It's quite common. Most estates do have an ice house. So you're walking into here. I know it's getting a bit dark. But there's a light luckily that's come on. So I'll let you have a look. Just see. So for those you don't know what an ice house is, they would take an ice off the lake in the winter, kept it in here, and it was basically their fridge. We haven't we got there yet, but we'll find on the other side of this hill, there was a, a vineyard. They actually grew grapes and made their own wine. So, and then there's the fridge. I'm gonna continue on down there. That will take me back to the entrance, and then I'm gonna walk over the top of the hill. We'll go down and look at the ruined abbey and see all the other follies. Having now seen the ice house, the driveway down there will take us back to the start. I'm walking up here to an area of the estate called the amphitheatre, and this is where, now on the top of the hill, we should start to see some of these vistas open up. The idea here is you see a vista, you go to the focal point. When you get to the focal point, you'll see something else, and you'll go to that focal point. So these gardens, or landscape gardens, really entice you to explore further. So we get to here, now this is the amphitheatre. A landscape garden isn't really so much about lots of different flowers and everything, it's more about, well, landscapes and I said follies. But you've got a few you know, plants around here. I think if you came here in spring, there'd be a lot of flowers out. And then, as I mentioned, we caught a glimpse of it through the trees. There is the Gothic temple. Now, that, that way there is roped off so we won't go down there. You can see there is some people down there having a look so we will find our way to the Gothic temple. And when I was down in the valley you can see up to it so I'm sure when we get there we'll get a really good view but I don't think we'll have to wait till we get to the Gothic temple to get a good view because as we come out here you can see we're up high. Now down there is the lake where we were at the beginning and beyond the lake is the River Mole so as we make our way to here we're going to get a really really nice view and um, this is why, why I really like coming to these places because I like to explore and I like to see views like this. Talking about going around the world as I said when we were down there 
I said we were going to go around the world in today's video. There's a vineyard along here. I feel like I'm now in the Loire Valley in France. Um, the only thing that gives it away, it's not the Loire Valley, is that if this was the Loire Valley, there'd probably be a nuclear power station just around the corner because there's about four in the Loire Valley, but we're in Surrey with a hint of France. I'm going to continue that way. We're going to go and find the Gothic Temple up closer. And somewhere down there beyond those trees is the ruined abbey. Having enjoyed the great views across the valley, as promised, we come to the Gothic Temple, probably one of the most famous features here at Paynes Hill Park. Now, it's actually made of wood, but it's been rendered to make it look, you know, like it was built out of stone or brick and rendered. We're going to go inside and have a look. Now, I have a feeling that when we go inside, there's going to be a vista opened up, which will, well, a moment ago, we were down there in the amphitheatre, we see, we see this Gothic temple, it made us want to come here. Okay, we couldn't come down here, but it was better right, because we went via the valley. We're now in the temple. As we walk in, first I'm going to show you the ceiling. So, you've got a nice Gothic ceiling. Now, have a look at the view from the temple. You can see straight out across Hamilton's finest landscape gardens. Down there, I can just see the bridge. The sun is going to mess us about with that. That's what you get on a bright day. It looks looks really weird, doesn't it? Anyway, down there is the bridge, um, and beyond that is the Turkish tent. So we're going to make our way right down across those islands and up to the Turkish tent. But first, we have somewhere else to go. At the beginning of the video, we could see the ruined abbey, which I think is probably just down there in the tree. So let's go down there and have a look at the ruined abbey. The Gothic temple is on the hill. We've come down to the bottom of the hill and we've come to see the ruined abbey. Here it is, here in the trees. I've always been quite fascinated by this building. Today is my first visit to Paynes Hill Park. It's somewhere I've always wanted to visit. I've just never got around to it until today. But, you know, from I've, I've seen about half the... No, not even half. I've seen... What I've seen so far, I'm really enjoying. And I think it's just going to get more and more exciting. Here we are at a ruined abbey. Now, on my channel, I've visited various ruined abbeys in the past none quite like this one because technically speaking it's not really a ruined abbey at all it's a folly but that's the whole point of a folly no the word folly means something it isn't so it's completely folly it's not a ruined abbey it's a romantic ruin designed to be a bit like a ruined abbey but yeah i still think it's great looking out the windows onto the lake see the facade interestingly this is actually made of wood that's real red. Yes, this is brick. That's real render, but these are are wooden. So yeah, if it was a real abbey. Also, um, it's questionable as to which part of the abbey this would actually be. Okay, it's Gothic. I suppose it could be like the gates house to a ruined abbey. Maybe it reminds me a bit. I've never actually been there. Someone I should go to one day. Of Battle Abbey, the pictures you see of the gatehouse. I suppose it's a bit like that. And then you got you know, the towers there. So it's fascinating building i really like it but it's um it's the ruined abbey that isn't actually a ruined abbey anyway let's go and find more follies further in paints hill park so after exploring the ruined abbey we're now somewhere completely different we're just in a nice little wooded path and we're on our way to China or a Chinese part of the estate. So what we're coming up to is just here. Now it's actually closed, but we can still appreciate it quite nicely. Looking straight on, that's the Chinese bridge. Doesn't look much from this angle, but because we obviously can't go over it, we're going to go over this pontoon bridge, this temporary bridge. But that gives us, you know, the opportunity to have a nice look at it. So we're on the peninsula at the moment. They call this part of the garden the Chinese Bridge Peninsula, fairly obviously because at the end, well, that is the Chinese Bridge. Over there, that's an island. So I always like it when you, you know, when you get a lake with an island 
by the middle it just sort of adds to the the fun of it you know the fact that you've had to cross water so there's the chinese bridge as we turn around here up over there just behind the trees you might just be able to see the whiteness of it is the gothic temple and now we're going on to this sort of rather bouncy pontoon bridge so you can actually hire these so you see it says floating pontoon high so i've had to hire this while they well the sun's very bright while they work on the chinese bridge we can see the ducks quite nicely see the mirage ducks yeah i think that one wanted to be featured i wonder if she's calling to the ducks on this side um so yeah we're crossing this it's like walking on a bouncy castle across water this is it's like yeah, it's really i'm not going to bounce it too much but it, it's quite bouncy anyway we're going to go up here now and i can see a rather exciting looking sign it says grotto entrance let's go and see what that is there's a chinese bridge which we didn't walk across and there's some ducks as i said we saw a sign a moment ago saying grotto entrance so i followed this path and it's taking us around here a nice narrow path and we're on this island in the lake and i just have a feeling things are going to get really really quite exciting in a moment heading down here i can see all oh, this almost like lava and you've got an oak tree bending over and then there's a, another bit of land now i have a feeling technically that's a separate bit of island a separate island which we'll discover in a moment look at all this if you think all this lava is impressive well it's only going to get better as we walk along here the path almost looks like it's going to come to an abrupt end and it is if you were to stay above ground but we're going into the hill on this little island on the you know in surrey we've got this really quite strange place and we're going into it we're down here onto this bit of boardwalk and this is why i said about it being two separate islands this is probably one of the most fancy bridges I've ever seen. If you look right through there, you see the other side. That's clearly another island. But if we look here, we're going to go into the rocks. And we're going around here. And then wait and see what is around this corner. This is the grotto. Now you can see, it says don't touch the crystals, so I won't, but we can have a look closely. See the crystals? I'm not going to count them because it's quite a lot. Uh, but let's look all down here and you can see the lights shining up at them, making all sorts of fancy colours. And then as we walk through here, we get the odd, even in here we're getting vistas, one out there, in to the water. So it'd be quite fun if you had a boat to sail through here. And we'll walk down here and then you get to a bit of a a junction in the path you think well do i go down there logically i'll be thinking to go that way because i was thinking we came in it's got to be a way out cause surely that's going deep into the hill we go into here and um well it looks looking really odd isn't it um that's a way out but not the humans can get out and looking up there i can see there's i can see daylight up there and there's all sorts of flickering lights going on from down there so we can't get out that way but as I said, when we got to this little junction here, there was another path. This one, this must be the way out. We are going deeper into the hill now. But as we go deeper, it only gets more and more spectacular. Look at this. Here we are, right inside the hill in this amazing grotto. It's really just, well, just amazing. And all this blueness and purpleness, it's all quite strange, but really quite fascinating. So you've got lots of, you've got various water up in here trickling through. And then there, look, you've got even more water trickling through. And just look at the ceiling and all these crystals. Really, it's probably one of the strangest places I've ever made a video, but really also one of the most exciting. 
and so we can see a bit more water there oh there's a way looking out out there get a view look at this side looking back across the grotto I can't believe this place has been, you know, here all this time. I've known about it, but I've never come here before. I always find that you go to these amazing places, you're like, why haven't I been here before? But anyway, here I am. By the way, if you are thinking of coming here, you know, do come and visit. Don't come on a Monday, because the grotto is closed on a Monday. Some more crystals there, you can see those. So, um, yeah, I deliberately didn't visit here on a Monday, because it really would be a shame to miss out. I mean, it's understandable they have to close the grotto for maintenance, so that's that's fine. But yeah, if you want to see the grotto, been before, maybe you're not worried, but if you want to see the grotto, don't come on a Monday. I think we're going back outside now. As we emerge into daylight from our rather unusual trip underground, what we're going to do now is we're going to go over the top of the grotto, because I think that's, it's not the only way off the island. There's the funny old pontoon bridge which we access the island from you could go back that way but what we'll do we're going to go over the top of the island and as i saw as we first entered the grotto it was effectively another island there was a bridge so we need to go over that bridge and that will take us to the next island and then we'll eventually go back to the mainland go up the hill and see some more follies because i think um I've, in the distance i could see the turkish tent there was a greek temple so you know we've got a bit more traveling to do yet before we we finish but even this first part has been really exciting oh look that's funny look looking like a roof of a building it's got like a roof um on top so underneath or on top of all of that is a roof underneath that roof is all those amazing crystals you'd never look at that roof it's like such a mundane roof although it's quite nice to slate roof but under there you'd never ever guess what's under there you might think it's an interesting walled uh, so this, we're now on top of, so it doesn't feel like two islands here, but like I say, technically it is because you could sail a boat right under here and out there. That's the path down there, which we entered the grotto with. And we, we were down there in that grotto. It looks like there was a huge, huge tree here as well. I think if we go around here, there's got to be another bridge off the island. There's like a another bit of grotto there well if we look across there i can see there's the five arch bridge and up there's the turkish tent so we've got as i say we've got all that excitement yet to come ah oh, now here's we did see this bridge earlier on at the beginning so that's our little bridge take us back to the mainland well the lake's looking very nice and calm and we've just come right across there so we were over there by that big cedar tree a little folly here to show you um we can't actually go up to it but this is like a, a roman triumphal arch i understand it was built as an arch whether it's collapsed i'm not entirely sure and um, and as i said this part is closed i think in winter what they do they they rope off quite a few grassy areas so they don't get completely eroded away which is understandable so i might have to come back in summer one day i'll, I'll definitely come here again to see some of the other parts of the garden close up but there's you know more than enough to see on a day like today a rather perfect reflection we were over there a moment ago where those two swamp cypresses are i've come over to this side of the lake so i want to show you the bridge this is the five arch bridge and again a very perfect reflection we're going to cross that bridge and we're going to continue down to the end of the lake and then we're going to go up into the hills because as we could see from when we were up on the previous hill the one over there where i can't quite see the gothic temple because there's a couple of trees in the way but when we were up there we could see down to this bridge and we could see that beyond this bridge there's more to see our walk is going to change a bit from you know from this nice peaceful lakeside walk up to a walk into the woods and the hills up there is the turkish tent we'll come to that when we get there um i haven't quite decided but we're going to just just follow the paths really and see what we can find so we're onto this bridge you can see there's not much more of the lake left but we might discover how the water gets in the lake when we get up there again perfect reflections and then looking across that way it's not quite so perfect the reflection there but there is the gothic temple you can just see a sort of a fuzzy reflection of the gothic temple in the water i think that's really nice here 
I have deliberately chose to visit on a weekday when it's quite quiet because it makes making the video a lot easier. So probably if you came in the summer it would be busier, but it's a very vast estate. So even if there was a hundred people here, they're nicely spread out. So I'm going to follow on up there and see what we can find. We've reached the end of the lake and the five arch bridge really looks so perfect, you know, with its symmetry both ways. And then you have the reflection of the oak trees. Here we are, the very, very end of the lake. There's a cascade, there's no water actually flowing down it. Maybe it's, it's turned off for the winter, which is quite common now. As for the River Mole, River Mole is a fair few feet below us. Now, look over there. There's a water wheel. We'll go and have a closer look at that in a minute. I understand that was to pump the water out of River Mole up to the level as required for the lake. So as we pan back around here, see water of the River Mole, water of the lake. Fair bit of difference. We're now a little way upstream on the River Mole, but we can still see the Five Arch Bridge. We're coming to what I mentioned back there, the water wheel, which is a really quite important part of the estate because it's this water wheel which supplies the lakes we've been walking beside with the water. Now we get to here, see some building. You can see the, the wheel. Let's go and have a look and I'll explain why the wheel is here and what it does. Now this building, it's not a water mill, so that's a fairly important thing. Don't mistake this for being a water mill because it's not, it's not grinding anything. I'm going to go down these steps. It's not actually on today. I think it probably does work. It'd be really fascinating to see it working. And I should think with the amount of water there is in the River Mole, it would work quite nicely. So, you can see there's lots of paddles. Now, the water would flow under the paddles, turning the wheel. So, when looking at the wheel in this direction, the wheel would be turning clockwise. And you see, it's a, it's a rather big wheel. It's not the biggest wheel of water we've ever seen. I think that has to go well to the laxy wheel on the Isle of Man, but then I think that's the biggest water wheel in the world, so it would be the biggest I've seen. Let's go in here. Now, again, it's not a water mill. Have a look. That is the main center axle. That is, will turn these to turn these. And then you've got pistons, almost like, well, not they're not pistons as such, but it's like a steam engine off center. That powers a beam engine up there. It's quite hard to see, but there's a beam up there, so that is what they call a northern donkey, up, down, up, down. So there's a centre pivot there, so this end will be going up and down, driven by the water wheel. Now at that end, we're going to go outside and have a look. There's some pumps. So it's the beam engine going up and down, which power, powers the pumps, sucking the water. So the water has effectively just been used twice. The water has flowed under here turning the water wheel and then it pushes the wheel only to be sucked up here by these pumps. You can see these pumps here, they're powered by the beam engine. The water would come out into this trough and then run down, and we go out to here, it would run down here, down this trough. You can see it come out the building there. I'd love to see this going. I am going to have to definitely come back here. And then, it's a bit hard to see, but under there the water would flow off down there and it must all be in a pipe at this point under there to the cascade because actually yeah, the cascade wasn't cascading so I suppose when the water wheels going the cascade were cascade if there's too much water here there's also an overflow go down there and back into the river mole so that is how the water as we saw back there gets up those few feet to get into the lake water powered by water I'll tell you where this part though of the garden reminds me of is um, Island Hall in the Peak District. It just really reminds me of it. If you want to see, see what you think, have a look at Lincoln screen now. You see when I explored Island Hall Estate a few years ago. I'm going to continue up there into the woods. Because look, up there, you might just be able to see, there's a Greek temple up there. So we've now just walked up this path and this is called the Alpine Valley. It does feel a bit like we're in the Alps and at the top is a gothic tower we'll have a closer look at that in a moment because there's some more of the estate as I came up 
the valley, I could see people walking along, almost like a hilltop path along here. So I'm gonna follow around there, see what we can find up in the trees up there. Having walked through the wood down this path, we come to this rather fascinating looking little building. This is the Hermitage. It sits here right on the edge of the hill and it juts right out. It's having a bit of work done, that's why there's scaffolding on at the moment. But if we go to the front door, let's see if we can go inside. Oh yes, it's open. What are we going to find in here, I wonder? Um, let's go in and, oh wow, like a just nice little room. Um, there's a bed there table and chairs. It'd be really fun to come here and spend a night in this little building. I don't know what it'd be like spending a night here, whether you'd sleep well or not, but it would be quite fun. Probably in the summer though, because it'd be a bit cold in the winter. You've got a thatched roof above. There's no glass in the windows. The windows are just wooden shutters. I can't shut them because of the bar of the scaffold pole. So you could check yourself in. You might get the odd spider coming to visit you, but I should think it'd be quite quite a fun thing to do in the summer if you can spend the night. And the other thing is you get a fantastic view. Really nice to look out across the Surrey Hills, across and the River Mole. Just generally really quite a nice place to be. Let's make our way back out, shut the door up. So that is the Hermitage. I'm going to follow now the path back through the woods. Let's go and find that Gothic tower. So from the Hermitage, I've been walking through the woods, following sort of the lines of these pylons, and we get to here. This is the Gothic tower. Now, it said it wasn't open today, but I noticed this door is open. I think I can guess what's going on. I understand, I was talking to a volunteer back there, he said that when the tower's open, you can go up it, and there's a cafe on the first floor. On the map I've got, it does point out a sign saying toilet, so I have a feeling we're coming to here. I think, yeah, look, it um, is the, literally the toilets. And then, I can't see much, but through there, that must be the stairs up to the tower. So you've got ladies, men's toilets, and a room, and a couple of chairs. So I have got to come here, definitely got to come here again. It needs to be in the summer. So I, I chose today because I wanted to sort of see today for the first time, you know, when it wouldn't be too busy. But uh, I definitely haven't fulfilled every bit of my sort of, um, you know, curiosities of this place. I, w I will come back here. It might not be for a couple of years, but at some point I'll come back here and I hopefully will get to go up that tower. It looks too good not to do. There's a couple more things we haven't yet seen. By the way, um, who put that there? It looks a bit in the way. When I was down there, it just was completely in the way. Anyway, um, and that's, by the way, down there, that's the Alpine Valley. So that will take us back down to the water mill. There's, I think there's another path through the trees because at one point I could see the Greek temple looking very much like the Parthenon in Athens, the way it was perched on the hill. So let's just have one more look at the really quite cool Gothic tower. Next time I come here, maybe I can go up the top. I'm gonna go and explore the estate now. So having seen the Gothic Tower, all feeling quite English, we're going to go abroad again. I'll tell you what this video would have made a really good one for, was, um, well sometimes people do say to me, which other YouTube channels do you watch when you're not making videos? And one of my favourite is a channel called The Tim Traveller. Now he, he does some really brilliant videos, yeah, do check his videos out. But he did a challenge once for his viewers called the International Staycation Challenge, where you had to find something that looked like it was somewhere it wasn't so like we've seen here buildings from other countries but they're here in england i went to beckenscott and i made a video there and i did end up in his um his uh, montage video of all these different of all his different viewers who have been to these different places so of that kind of thing this would have been a good entry we're in england we're in surrey and here we have a bit of greece we have this fantastic temple Temple of Bacchus. I've never been to Greece and it's somewhere I really would like to go to. It's got some interesting railways. It's got so many fantastic temples. I could probably make videos out forever. They might be, if you went to the Parthenon, it might be a bit more crowded, 
this is probably a little bit like Surrey's version of the Parthenon here, you know, on a rock. Um, not quite like the Acropolis in Athens, but it's it's the Temple of Bacchus. It's fascinating. I believe it dates from 1762 when, you know, the gardens were created. Let's go and have a look inside. We come up to these lovely columns. Interestingly, the statues are actually um, just cardboard cutouts, if you or you know, they're swimming, swimming. So yeah, it's not often I kind of go around a lady's legs like that in my videos, but you know, um, look, that one's um, not even covering herself. Um, again, yeah, I don't normally do that kind of thing in my videos, but it's always a bit room for bit fun. Um, naked man now as well. So this is inside the temple. Really quite fascinating, you can see. I don't know too much about great, uh, Greek history, but you can see the various different um, heads and statues on, on plinths. If my girlfriend was here, she would be. She knows a lot about this thing, so if she was here, she'd be able to tell me all about what we are. And she, she, so yeah, um, she's the expert on ancient Greece. Uh, here we are at the other side now of the temple, and if we look, we spin around, and we can see, more fantastic views of Surrey. Now going back to the water wheel we saw down on the River Mole, if you look, it looks like there's two rivers. That's the original course. This one, this is the, the course dug out for the River Mole um, water wheel. The water wheel is just down by that yew tree. You can't quite see it. You can see a bit more the River Mole. There's the, um, the Roman mausoleum. I can see a church in the distance. Somewhere over the hills must be the Chantley Heath Semaphore Tower, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video was, you know, where I went to on a previous video. So here we are, this is, it's not really quite like um, Athens and the Parthenon, but it's what you're gonna, the closest thing you're gonna get to it here in Surrey. We've got one more place to go now in this video. We're gonna go from Greece to Turkey. I'm just walk through this gate, you can just see over there in the trees, that was the Temple of Bacchus, which was really quite fascinating. As I said, we're gonna to go to Turkey. You can't normally, you know, walk from Greece to Turkey in a couple of minutes, but here we can. Here we are, this is the Turkish tent. Really quite another unusual folly. What we'll do, we'll have a quick look at this. There's a, a really fantastic view. I'm not gonna show you that just yet, I'm gonna show you inside the tent first, because I want, I think this is, this is like the, the end of you know the walk around so there we are turkish tent let's go inside it's not a huge amount to see inside but it's a quite fascinating building it's like elliptical or it's yeah it's an oval down here it's got a circular roof but the roof sort of spreads out so that's quite interesting so when charles hamilton you know designed these gardens the idea was you walked around roughly in the route that we have but you'd finish up here up at the turkish tent and you would finish by looking at the most spectacular view of the estate we're gonna to see today. Let's finish with this. That really is one of the best views I've ever seen. Yeah, it's just, there's everything you can see uh, leading us from the Gothic temple down to the Five Arch Bridge. You can see in the middle of it, um, there's the grotto, the whole lakes, everything. The river mole down there it's really been a really exciting place i really do recommend visiting paintill park they're open most days i think except christmas day boxing day so do you know do come and visit paintill park it's a fantastic place it's easy to get to it's only just off the m25 and it's in the village of cobham the village of cobham in surrey cobham does have a railway station it's called cobham stoke daglam so if you came by train it might be a bit of a walk but there's probably various buses that pass here so do come and visit paintill park and you know travel around the world like i did in in a, in a day it's been great fun so thank you very much for watching please do feel free to like subscribe and comment from this fantastic view goodbye